Welcome to the Salesforce Admins Podcast, where we talk about product, community, and careers to help you be an awesome admin. I'm your host today, Jillian Bruce, and we have a really fun episode lined up for you. We are talking with Kushwant Singh, aka Kush, who's SVP of Product Management here at Salesforce, in charge of all things experience. And I mean all things experience, not just experience cloud, but experience services. And if you're wondering what all that means, don't worry, he's going to answer that for you. So without further ado, let's get Kush on the pod. Kush, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Jillian. It's wonderful to have you on. I am very much looking forward to our discussion because we are talking about something that might be a little nebulous to some of us, especially if you've been in the Salesforce ecosystem for a while. You know, we have experience cloud, experience services, experience all the things. Kush, clarify for us what all of that means. Well, you know, Jillian, I wish I got that question, uh, or rather I wish I had proactively answered that question uh, at the recent TDX. So uh, just a bit of a, just a sidetrack a little. For those of you who uh, attended the recent TDX, we had a, a true to the core session where a few of us were up on stage. Um, and I introduced myself as, my name's Kush, I'm a product manager, and I work on all things experiences. Now, I honestly thought that I would be inundated with questions but I realized that I actually got zero questions. And uh, I realized that people just probably didn't get what all things experience means, right? So I'm going to learn from that and be very clear in our conversation over here. So um, so taking a step back, when we say uh, we just recently had, you know, sort of we realigned some of our teams internally, and we've created this group internally called Experience Services. And what Experience Services is is that it brings together a few teams together. First and foremost, we have our UI platform team. And so from a UI platform perspective, think of it as you know all things web runtime, whether it's Aura, uh, Lightning Web Runtime, uh, LWC or Lightning Web Components. Uh, it includes things that all of the, the good components you have in Lex, so the record forms, lists, performance, etc. So that's the, the UI platform team. Um, then we also brought the experience cloud team, which really is takes all the goodness that we have in Lex and uh, manifests it to customers and partners, external facing customers and partners. Uh, we do have instances where it's also facing employees as employee intranets, but it takes all of that goodness. We also brought together our mobile teams, right? So whether that's the the Salesforce flagship mobile app, whether that's our mobile SDK, whether that's you know taking an experience cloud site and creating a hybrid mobile app out of it through mobile publisher, we brought the mobile team together as well. And then finally, we brought the Mobify team, which some of you may know as uh, the managed runtime offering to build out sort of these progressive web apps for commerce use cases. So in a nutshell, this experience services team brings together the UI platform, uh, brings together Experience Cloud, brings together uh, the mobile teams, and brings Mobify together. So what we can do now is collectively we are responsible for all things experiences, and it helps us build a common product strategy ar- across the board, whether you're building an experience for a you know an employee, a customer, or a partner for that matter. So that was really helpful. It helped me kind of understand this because, you know, again, experience is one of those words that especially as a Salesforce admin, I mean, we're always thinking about our end users experience. That's kind of our whole goal is to make it seamless and make it really uh, useful. But as you just described, experiences is like so many things, right? And I, I really appreciate that you have explained how the teams are kind of uniting under this kind of umbrella to really think about the holistic picture when it comes to this, you know, these different experiences pieces. I mean, UI, like designer's mindset is one of the core admin skills that we have, right? Because it's always yeah. thinking about how how is my user experience this? How can I maximize that experience, make it more efficient? And, you know, when you talk about you know, lightning experience, that, I mean, God, talk about something that changed the game for admins, right? I know, it did. It did entirely. It changed the game, but it also, um, you know, in full transparency, we... We added a, uh, you know, we added a bit of a divide as well, right? So if you take examples where you build a component for uh, the app builder, it may or may not work in the experience builder. Um, you have a set of record components that 
look gloriously well on on Lex, but they may not surface all of the capabilities. The actions don't surface in the experience build, or vice versa. The branding, the theming, the the mobile web responsiveness uh, aspect of things that show up on experience builder don't show up in the app builder side of things. And so we have sort of introduced this um, divide, which actually has made our uh, well, we have well, while well, each team has done a phenomenal job in going deep in their use cases. Uh, it, it's been at, at an expense of a divide where as a Salesforce admin, as a Salesforce developer, you want your investments to go across all of your various uh, endpoints, right? You, you might be a uh, Salesforce admin for a company that has that is using Salesforce for their employee uh, experience, for example, their service agents, right? Uh, similarly, you might also, in, within your same uh, company, you may have an endpoint, a, a customer help center, which is, you know, sort of customer facing, or you might be selling products through channels, which is also sort of partner facing. And you want your investments to be able to run across ideally. So uh, again, all teams have done great in their specific uh, areas, but by bringing us together, we're really hopeful that we can deliver more value uh, for our Salesforce admins and our developers uh, as they manage all of these various endpoints. Yeah, you know, I think as a company, right, for someone who's maybe been in the ecosystem for a long time, this is kind of the, uh, this is this is a, a familiar kind of road, right, is that we develop something really, this one team kind of goes down and develops this new way of doing something. And then we kind yeah. of have like, shadow examples of it happening all separately within the company. And then, hey, let's bring everybody together. Exactly. Let's make this a more cohesive, holistic experience for our admins, for our developers. And it's exciting to bring all those like really smart brains together to work together versus everyone we're kind of working in a silo. Indeed, indeed. And I think it's also um, indicative of trying to sort of complete what we start. I think we've heard from admins just this uh, this uh, this recent TDX. I mean, and at every sort of TDX or any sort of Dreamforce we do, any true to the core session or um, any sort of feedback we get from our MVPs and our admins out there, developers. You know, they'll they'll give us feedback, which is actually quite true. We start something, but we don't complete it, right? Um, we say something that we will deliver something, but we at times don't deliver it. And so, I think by bringing all of our um, sort of teams together that manage experience, I think it really um, organizational differences should not be the reason why uh, we are not able to complete what we start or deliver what we say we will deliver. And so we're really hopeful that we'll be able to actually uh, address those two uh, key areas. Yeah, I, I've always heard the joke, uh, we don't want to let our org chart show, right? Like- exactly, 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 <laughs> exactly. Across both desktop and mobile for that matter. It, totally, yeah. So, um, so Kush, before we get a little bit further, I mean, clearly you've got a big undertaking that you and your teams are doing. Can you tell me a little bit about kind of you and how you got here? Like, how long have you been at Salesforce? Because all of these these works have been in pro- progress for a long time. You mentioned when we released Lightning Experience. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your background. Oh yeah, sure. So I've uh, like I um, I've been at Salesforce. I think May sometime this this month is my seventh uh, year anniversary. Congratulations! Um, thank you, thank you. And um, I have truly enjoyed every single day uh, of my time here at Salesforce. Uh, if you look at my background, I you know rarely spend more than five to six years in a company. And the fact that I'm here for the seventh year and still super challenged is just sort of speaks towards you know, what Salesforce offers from a, from a challenge point of view, right? There's always something new. There's always a, a new challenge for us to work on. And um, I've actually spent probably six and a half or six and three quarters of that seven years uh, working on Experience Cloud. And so most of my background is from a B2C side of things. I spent some time at eBay, at Microsoft, at a startup called Mosey, uh, working on a number of sort of B2C oriented products. Um and I wanted to I wanted to build products in an enterprise setting for enterprise, but I didn't want to veer too far away from um, you know the consumer side of things, the B two C side of things. And Experience Cloud really sort of helped me walk that fine line where you're building you know these digital experience products that are used by enterprises for their customers, for their for their partners. So it really gave me a a, a good sort of middle ground. 
that said, Experience Cloud is a it's a platform upon the overall sort of Salesforce platform. And so over the last six and a half years or so, um, I've had the opportunity to work with some immensely dedicated individuals on the platform side of things as well. And so uh, that bring a lot of the goodness that we see in Lex and Experience Cloud and mobile to life. And so bringing the teams together was you know, like bringing a, a, a group of old friends together. I love that. Getting the band back together. That's good. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about kind of what's currently going on in Experience Cloud, right? So yeah. I know there were some some good announcements, you know, in the, at Dreamforce last year, at TDX yeah. this year. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about kind of where we're currently at with Experience Cloud and kind of why maybe an admin who hasn't yet dabbled in Experience Cloud might consider it? Sure, sure. So um, again, just to just to level set one more time, a customer uses Experience Cloud for a number of uh, use cases. You could use uh, Experience Cloud to build out a simple marketing website, corporate website. You could use Experience Cloud to build out a, a self service sort of. Um, destination. So that self-service destination could be uh, a help center, right, where you want to surface your knowledge base articles, where you wish to sort of surface chatbots, uh, where you wish to, for example, give your customers the ability to log in and manage their account, manage their uh, profile for that matter. Uh, Similarly, you could use Experience Cloud to build out a channel reseller portal, right, where, um, you know, you may not be selling direct or you may be selling direct, but you also sell through your various channels and you need a way to manage your channels. Um, you could use Experience Cloud to build a commerce storefront, whether it's a B2B commerce storefront, a B2C commerce storefront, etc. So Experience Cloud, y- you can use it for a variety of different sort of customer-facing, um, partner-facing uh, use cases. In fact, I should also mention employee-facing use cases. You could build out a company intranet for that very matter as well. And so um, over the last years, uh, last few years, with the introduction of Lightning, and aura for that matter, it really revolutionized, um, you know, the ability for our customers to build all of this out in a very low code, fast time to market aspect of things. Uh, and we've seen, you know, phenomenal adoption, super humbled, right, by the adoption we have, we've gotten, what, north of 70,000 odd sites. I think our Mao is around, our monthly active usage is like maybe about 40 to 50 million. Uh, we have a, a daily active usage of about five to six million. And so, I mean, Again, super thankful to all of the, the the customers and the admins and the developers out there who have invested so much of their time in Experience Cloud. That said, as with every technology, um, there comes a time where you've hit a bit of a wall. And we hit a wall, right, with Aura um, from a performance, from a scale, from a um, customizability point of view, right, where you can see that as you are trying to build out these next generation sort of consumer grade experiences like storefronts, like websites, even these consumer grade portals where you know you expect an iPhone like experience, whether it's employee facing or customer facing experience, right? So uh, we had a bit of a wall with Aura, and so over the last I would say eighteen months, we've been, for lack of a better way to put it, somewhat silent in terms of our feature deliverables, right? We've been, sure, we've been delivering a few features here and there, but like our MVP, we have a, we have a really uh, passionate and, you know, amazing MVP out there. Uh, his name is Phil Weinmeister. Oh, yes. We know Phil very well. <laughs> exactly. And so I think some of, many of you must have seen his post where he was, he's actually tracking the number of features that Experience Cloud launches and he showed this bar graph right that showed the you know the decreasing number of features over the last 18 months and uh and i replied to him and you know again huge respect for phil and um the fact of the matter is that we've had to sort of go under the hood and rebuild from ground up using lightning web runtime using lightning web components um so that we can actually deliver this consumer-grade scale and performance and customizability, whether it's a B2B, B2C, or B2E type of um, use case. And so we've been, quote-unquote, silent for a while, but I'm super excited at what's coming in this summer release and what's going to go, a lot of it going to go generally available this winter release, right? So 
again, long story short, we have been re-architecting for consumer grade uh, across the entire customer journey. So whether you're looking at a you know an awareness use case, whether you're looking for an acquisition use case, a service use case, a loyalty use case, you want to deliver consumer grade across the board. And with Lightning Web Runtime, with Lightning Web Components, we do believe that we've got the right foundation uh, upon which we can actually deliver these these experiences. So that's sort of the the overarching area where we're where we're headed. I mean, that's impressive. I mean, we talk, especially even as admins, right? We have our own kind of technical debt that we accrue over many years of adminning a specific org. And sometimes you do, you got to just like go back, peel back the covers and kind of go in and make sure everything, the foundations are, you know, updated and running better. And hey, if you got a system that's not working for you, you got to invest the time and pause on the new stuff for a minute. Let's make the core stuff like really work and function so that we can continue to build. So yeah. Yeah. I love that transparency. I think it's really useful to help our admins and everybody understand kind of what all of the hard work that your team is doing. And yeah, I mean, hey, now that we talked about all the hard work that you've all been doing, let's talk about some of the shiny new fun things that you, <laughs> you have coming down the pipe. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. So um, now I think uh, on that note, it's also, I do also want to underscore that we have so many, all of that, you know, adoption stats that I talked about. It's that they're all, you know, the visual force or mostly aura, right? Uh, uh, um, investments. And, you know, I want to underscore that we're not, we're not just leaving Aura or VF behind. And so there are, there are many aspects that would customers on Aura, customers on VF would also uh, be able to benefit from. So let's sort of dive into those shiny aspects of things, right? So I think if we think of this as maybe a, um, stack diagram, right? Maybe we'll start at the at the at the lowest level of infrastructure, right? What are we doing from an infrastructure point of view to help deliver that consumer grade type of experiences? So first and foremost, we've invested a fair amount of time and effort to deliver uh, performance. And so one of the things you'll start to notice is an our, our out of the box CDN, right? So uh, behind the scenes, we work with uh, with Akamai. And what that does is that it allows it just provides customers an out of the box CDN that um, that they can actually choose to use. So, Kush, before we go forward, what is a CDN? Let's break down the. Uh, sure, it's a content delivery network. What that does is it allows um, your public uh, aspects of your site of your mobile app, right, uh, to be cached on uh, these sort of endpoints which are closer to the consumer right um, and so that allows for faster delivery and if it doesn't change if that public information doesn't change very much it's just served out of cash right versus sort of another round hop back so again at the end of the day it's about better delivery of of uh, faster delivery of the experience now this used to be a bit of an opt-in thing and so what we have done now is as of spring and summer and winter what we're doing is behind the scenes we are rolling out as part of the secure domains effort as secure domains is being enabled uh, across all net new sites and existing sites we're just enabling the default cdn by default right so you don't have to make it's an opt-out versus an opt-in right so from that perspective we're trying to ensure that everyone gets you know phenomenal performance from from the get-go now, similarly, another thing that we're really excited about is, and the team's working on it, is as part of the out-of-the-box CDN from an infrastructure point of view, is being able to get more capabilities out of that out of, of CDN. Now, have you gone to a site where the images look really, you know, weird, wonky, feels like this is a desktop site they're trying to, you know, throw onto a mobile or a, or a tablet? Yeah, everything's out of perspective and you got to exactly. like try and exactly. scroll weird ways. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So uh, another thing that if you use the out-of-the-box CDN, another thing that our customers can look forward to is dynamic image resizing, right? So at times, as so when your the same image renders well on a mobile, a tablet, a desktop, and similarly, if you're an admin, you may inadvertently uh, upload a I don't know a twenty MB file, right, uh, image, and then say, "Look, why is my site loading so slowly?" Right, and so what we're trying to do is also correct that where. Uh, you may upload a 20 MB file, please don't. Um, but <laughs> what we'll do on our side, on the CDN side of things, we'll sort of resize that and you know ensure that we're delivering a, you know, a more optimized 
uh, image to the customer. So that's another thing that you know we're really excited about from an infrastructure point of view. So lots yeah. of good work happening, you know, from a, a perf point of view. Now, then there is scale, right? So from a scale point of view, we have aspects like concurrency. So concurrent user scale. So, um, you know, how many users can you support on that portal? Uh, concurrent read scale. So how many sort of requests are coming in concurrently and before the site just says, look, you know, I can't handle this, right? <laughs> And concurrent rights. So, for example, you may ha- you may be running a promotion, and uh, you, that promotion you may you know sort of advertise that on on Twitter or on you know Instagram, and then you suddenly have this massive surge of folks coming to your site, and they all want to sign up to know when it's going to be made available. Uh, how do we ensure that those rights don't sort of uh, kneel over and 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 just sort of fall over, right? So again, a lot of the work that we're doing around infrastructure, whether it's performance and scale, is are things that we have been rolling out slowly over the over the last few releases, and then we really look to bring it home over the course of the summer and the uh, and the winter releases. So that's from an infrastructure point of view. Nice, nice. Now, as we move up the stack. We can talk about things like data and content. Now, let's start off with content. Salesforce in general hasn't been uh, has had a bit of a, a content management gap for a little while, and we have customers using third-party content management systems, etc., to complement the data investments that they have in Salesforce. Now, probably I would say twenty-four months back, we introduced uh, Salesforce CMS, which was for the very first time, a content management system from Salesforce. Now, what we've come to realize over the 24 months is that, boy, do we need you know a lot more improvements to it. And so over the last, I would say, 18 months, we have been actually re-architecting the content management system from ground up. It is um, going to be json based, so very standard point of view. Uh, JSON also would allow our customers to model many different types of content, whether that content is a blog, an email, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Very extensible. So from that point of view, if we don't offer something out of the box, you can add a sidebar extension that allows you that, you know, like Grammarly that would say, hey, look, while you're typing this thing, it's telling you, you should add X, Y, and Z, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We also... Um, 24 months back, introduced two versions of the content management system. One was a free version, included version, I would say. I shouldn't say free. Um, (laughs) uh, The included version. And the other one was uh, the paid version. What we realized really was, you know what? It's just artificial, right? Our customers really, you know, they're coming to Salesforce for a variety of different use cases. um, And content really should be something that supports the and brings those use cases to life. And so what we have done is as of the summer release, we have basically provided the paid CMS, right, which we have gotten rid of and just given it, included it as part of all Experience Cloud licenses. In fact, you know, there are so many licenses out there at Salesforce that use Experience Cloud licenses. And so um, as of this summer, uh, all of our customers will get the advanced version of content management. And at the same time, they will get access to the beta version of this new, what we call CMS 2.0 internally, we call that the JSON based. They'll get beta access to that as well without any sort of opt-in. They just, there's a checkbox they have to check and they'll be able to take it for a spin. But we look to um, make that CMS 2.0, our next version of CMS, generally available in the in the winter time frame as well. So that's another massive sort of uplift and improvement that we're doing from a content management point of view. Yeah, yeah. And sort of democratizing content altogether. That's great. I mean, I know admins are going to be very excited to be able to access that great capability without having to, you know, jump through any additional hoops to get it. So that's exactly. <laughs> thank you. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, now, let's talk about data. Now, when we think about the data side of things, this is where um, a lot of our investments, at least from an experience services point of view, is that we have teams that are experts in records, dynamic forms, lists, and they're doing a lot of good work to sort of expand. For example, dynamic forms today, it's only available in custom objects. Why? It should go ex- across to all standard objects. Yes. That's something that the team is working on, right? Uh, I'm you know, really, um, I'm really glad that we are 
going to stay really true to the fact that when we start something, we're going to end it and we're going to go all the way. At the same time, this team is also working to bring all of that goodness across to not just employee-facing experiences in Lex, but also to customer-facing, partner-facing experiences via Experience Cloud. And so that's one example where as one unit experience services, it really brings benefit across all of the various endpoints, whether it's Lex or Experience Cloud or mobile for that matter. Right. So that's something that I'm, we're really looking forward to. Um, and then over on top of that, the ability to sort of surface that data, but represent it in different visualizations, right? So you may want to show a list view in the form of a grid or in the form of a certain set of tiles, because again, you want to do that because it's customer facing, it's partner facing, you have to apply your style guide on it, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all the goodness that you can expect to see over the course of the next two releases from a data point of view. I mean, you, you, that was that's some major stuff. You know, I know that Dynamic Forms is one of uh, the top favorite admin feature overall. Yes. And so being able to bring that to standard objects will be huge. Uh, so yes. thank you. Thank you on behalf yeah, it, of all admins everywhere. <laughs> it's a shout out to all of the good teams that are working on that front. Um, <laughs> So we touched about infra, we touched about um, content, we touched about data. Now let's touch about um, the the UI runtime itself, right? Which is Lightning Web Runtime and Lightning Web Components. Clearly, the degree of out-of-the-box components for Aura, there are a lot more out-of-the-box components for Aura than there are for LWCs, right? No doubt about it. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to catch up to a certain degree but catch up with uh in an in a in a way that is addressing the the most important use cases from out of the box component point of view but at the same time not sacrificing customizability and so from an lwr point of view a few things to sort of call out one is i'll start off first with when you build a site uh with experience cloud and with lwr and lwcs Search is always a use case that comes up. And by search, we tend to just think maybe at times CRM search. But really, our customers are thinking of it as site search. They want to be able to cut across whether it's a CRM, whether it's site meta information like the page title uh, or the site title or something that's in a text, a rich text component, whether that's CMS content, whether those are products, right, or any other objects. They want to be able to search the entire site. Yeah, they don't. They don't know the differences between that, right? They just want to find what they need. Exactly, and so. For them, this is this is complexity that we should abstract from them. And so, again, this is something that our customers can expect to see uh, in beta, in the in the summer time frame. And, you know, all goes well. We're going to take the hood off and generally make it available in the winter time frame, starting with sort of site meta information and uh, CMS content as part of the index. And then we're going to expand that to CRM and to uh, other objects for that matter. All right. So just a reminder to all listeners, forward-looking statement applies to everything that Kush just said. <laughs> this is what happens oh, yes, when we get exciting too. product information. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that too as well. Yes. Um, so I think, again, you know, from an LWR point of view, there's just so much more maturity that's, that customers can expect to see with, uh, with LWR and Experience Cloud. Because whether it's out of the box components for content for uh, data whether it's you know search whether it is even the ability to deliver these dynamic experiences so one of the things that our customers really appreciate uh, in aura is the ability to sort of personalize the experience using crm information right so show me this content this data if this you know if user dot account equals to xyz etc right and so the ability to deliver that type of personalization is 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 key but at the same time they want to be able to do things like real time personalization so using for example evergage right or interaction studio for that matter right so as you're browsing the site or portal right you're able to get relevant information that's on the fly generated right uh, so those are another aspects of lwr that we are investing in very heavily so whether it's infrastructure, whether it's data, whether it's um, content, whether it's the UI framework and the various personalization aspects of things, uh, lots of investment happening. Now, all of this has to translate and manifest on mobile. Mm -hmm. And so that's the other dimension that we are heavily investing in. So whether you are uh, customizing the experience in design time as an admin, 
to say, hey, look, you know what? I want to show this image on desktop, but another image on mobile. Or I want to say, I want to have this font you applied in mobile versus on desktop. I want to be able to take my LWR site and use Mobile Publisher to create a, a, a mobile app that I can deploy via the app stores. Those are all areas that we are working on over the course of the next uh, two releases as well. So again, lots of excitement uh, as we coming. work across this entire stack. Yes. Yeah, lots coming. Well, Kush, I so appreciate you taking the time to chat with us here on the podcast about all things experience services, experience cloud. I know I got a lot of questions answered. I'm sure a lot of people listening are very happy to hear all of the things that you and your team are working on. And I'm sure they will have many more questions. So <laughs> I will, uh, I'll will i include links to um, some of the great Trailblazer community groups that you have set up for Lightning Experience and for Experience Cloud for people to submit feedback and And uh, thanks again for all of the work that you and your team do. And I look forward to checking back in with you after a couple of releases here and and coming back to what you all have done and and hearing about what is even next from then on. For sure, Jalen. I mean, I truly appreciate the opportunity. And again, to all our Salesforce admins, you are our eyes and ears out there. You know, feedback is a gift. Please, please keep it coming. And uh, we're so appreciative of all that you do for us. Huge thanks to Coach for taking the time to chat with us. He and his team have been so busy working on really important foundational improvements to both Experience Cloud and Experience Services. And it's so great to now understand what Experience Services mean, because for us admins, it means a lot of the stuff that we use every day. So, uh, hey, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about dynamic lightning pages coming for uh, standard objects. Whoop, whoop. Again, forward-looking statement. But I look forward to getting Kush back on the podcast to ask him about that once it has been released in a few releases. So um, if you want to learn more or you have more feedback about anything Experience Cloud or Experience Services, Kush and his team pay close attention to the Trailblazer community. So go to the Lightning Experience Group or the Experience Cloud Group on the Trailblazer community and uh, put your feedback in there, put your questions in there. He's got an amazing team of very talented people. And uh, if you want to learn anything else about how you can be a successful Salesforce admin, go to my favorite website, admin.salesforce.com. There you can find other great podcasts, blogs, and videos to help you in your Salesforce admin journey. I also encourage you to check out the new Salesforce Admin Skills Kit, which we just launched last month, and it is right there on the admin.salesforce.com webpage. Check it out. Let me know what you think. We're going to do some great podcast episodes about that coming up here real soon. If you want to follow my guest today, Kush, you can find him at Kush underscore Singh. You can follow me at Jillian K. Bruce, and you can follow Mike, my amazing co-host, at Mike Gerholt. You can follow everything awesome admin related at Salesforce Admin no I on Twitter. With that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you next time in the cloud.